Hey guys, Matt here for Photo News and Reviews. Oh no, no, I'm talking to the camera. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you. Hi guys, Matt here for Photo News and Reviews. Today I'm on the Pixel stand and on the That Nikon Guy channel I've had a lot, a lot, a lot of questions from people about different Pixel products. So I wanted to run through them with you because looking at the boxes and looking at the names, I couldn't make it out at all. So I've just had the marketing manager run me through all the different uh, flash triggers and camera triggers and now I'll run you through all of them as well. Starting off with their most basic, the RC201 is remote control and it's just a, a trigger to set off your shutter. There's no timer, there's nothing like that and you have to buy one specific to your brand of camera. They are really cheap, I've used one before. There's, you know, there's not much that can go wrong until you smash it. Next up is the TC2521 ones and these are timed but they're with a cable so you can put in your number of shots and your intervals and then it'll talk to the camera and give you the time shots. Great for if you want to do multiple exposures and your camera doesn't have an intermolometer in it or if you want to do exposures beyond the 30 seconds to a predefined amount of time. Great and the cables are interchangeable so once you buy one you can buy different cables to make it work on different cameras. Next up is the TW282 and this is basically the same as the previous one except it's wireless. So you can pop this little unit on the top of your camera, the cable connects to the camera and then you can program this one from afar and it all will talk to each other. So just an extra step up. Next up, the Pawn adds flash capability um, but it's a very simple one. It's just a flash now, flash now, flash now. There's no com talking between the two. It's got up to 80 meters of range in ideal world. And it's, yeah, there's no groupings, no additional settings on that one. You can get it as either just the receiver or the receiver and sender set. And then, you know, you can add extra receivers to control more than one flash at a time. Next up is the Soldier, and this is pretty much the same as the Pawn, except that it adds three group options. So then you can control three different flashes and change which one that you want to trigger each time. Again, they're flash specific to different brands. They have Nikon, Canon, Sony, Olympus, and Panasonic. Okay, the Rook is another slight step up again in that each one can send and receive, so you can put a flash on top of one as well, and it still has the three different groups. Next up in our never-ending story of Pixel accessories is Opus, which is, as it says, a transceiver, and obviously styled on the Pocket Wizard Plus 2. This one you can both send and receive on the one unit. Again, three groups, no TTL. But next up, let's look at the TTL option. And here we are, this is the King. This is the one that so many people have been waiting on. This was originally available for Canon and it's now out for Nikon and Sony as well. This offers full TTL as well as high speed sync. This goes up to one eight thousandth of a second. It has three different groups, up to seven combinations and I believe it has a few different channels as well. It comes in this pack which has a sender and a receiver and you can buy additional receivers separately and it's a fraction of the cost of the other brands out there. Let's open this box up. Okay, and inside the box you can see uh, the bubble wrap wrapping, then it comes with a single flash foot, and then the inside we've still got a small user's guide, and then the bag. Now bags are one of those things you often don't think about, but when it is coming with a lot of different bits and pieces, having something that's specially designed to have pockets and pouches for everything is a really beneficial thing to have. Let's get it out. Okay, unpacking it. In the top here is a USB cable. These ones are uh, firmware updatable. Your sender and your transmitter and receiver, connecting cables, and some additional. You can stick that on the back to add an extra cold shoe onto one of these or anything. This is the receiver. This is the transmitter. Let's open them up and have a little close up. Now I know there's people out there who are just averse to plastic whatsoever. In my grandfather's day, lunch boxes were made out of solid steel. But yes, these are fully plastic, but then so is all the competition on the market. And like everything, there's different levels of quality. And the plastic on these, I think, feels pretty good. The only thing I'd be worried about is the battery cover. But in terms of the rest of the body, it feels like it's of a quality that's going to flex rather than break. Um, they're reasonably small in size, about, you know, they're bigger than the, the Pocket Wizard alternative, 
but then they're equal size, so you don't have one small one and one enormous one. In my opinion, the most delicate place on anything flash related is always the foot. Um, it would be great if these came with a metal foot. Unfortunately, they don't. The thread is metal though, but again, it does look like reasonably good quality. I'm gonna do my best to get a hold of these to do uh, full hands-on testing when I'm back in Hong Kong. So stay tuned for that one. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you soon.